Welcome everybody to Chi Bites. I'm Sarah Devine, White Tiger Qigong Senior Instructor with a Masters in Sport and Exercise Science. White Tiger Qigong comes from a lineage of Taoist medical Qigong which has its roots in ancient Lao Tzu Taoism, the I Ching and also ancient Chinese medicine and it com also combines a modern lens of sports science and biohacking. So today we're going to look at fabulous fascia and how Qigong is really an effective movement and meditation practice for fascial health and we're going to have a quick go at the dragon from five element Qigong. So first of all what is Fascia. Well, fascia is this beautiful substance. It's this connective tissue that is like a gluey, proteinous web that holds us together. It, it, um, you find it around, and it also interpenetrates muscles and bone and nerves and blood cells and organs. So it's super, super, super important. And science is still only really just on the cusp of finding out more about how it supports us to move and also what we see reflected in Taoist medical Qigong, how it relates to the meridians. So the meridians, um, as we've mentioned before, are these rivers or channels of energy that run right through the body and they correspond with all of the organ systems. There was a gentleman called, or this, there is a, a man called Thomas Myers who's written a book called Anatomy Trains, which will, which looks at how fascia effectively supports muscle uh, in these different um, arrangements or lines through the body, and um, that effectively we've got all of these muscles bound by one large fascial body um, or sling. And this concept we can understand in Taoist medical Qigong as the fascia kind of representing the meridian lines. And in actual fact, after he'd written about this, he discovered that there are lots of correlations between his myofascial lines meridian system and the Chinese medicine meridian system. So it's really fascinating. So just one, one quick example. You've got this superficial front line that comes all the way up from your toe up the front of the body right into the neck and that uh, closely corresponds with the stomach meridian. So what can go wrong with fascia? Well, your emotions, um, your physical traumas, your mental traumas, emotional traumas, they can get stuck in the fascial matrix and this can cause kinks or knots. It can also um, make the fascia sticky, less responsive, um, blocked, stiff, and aging can have that effect as well on the fascia and also repetitive behaviors. So if you're, for example, you know, used to hunching over a desk all day, that's going to cause a lot of stickiness in your fascia, especially around the organs in the front of the body. Now, I'll just give you an example of, um, okay, I'm, I'm not in my twenties anymore, but my fascia is still pretty responsive. It should be quite elastic and ping back. So. I'm on the right track here, I know I am. Well, ideally the fascia, as I say, it should spring, be springy, it should slide and glide and have this really nice elastic quality to it. So how does Qigong help us to build the, these qualities? How does it support fascial health? Well, first of all, in White Tiger Qigong, we really work on stability through the trunk and rooting through the feet, which first of all gives us a really stable platform to then support these fascial lines to then move effectively and carry their large group of muscles into different positions. Secondly, we work with uh, tension. So we bring tension to the fascia through different movements. One is squeezing, it's like compression and expansion and we do that typically with the organs and then another is when we wring out the fascia it's like wringing out a towel it's really really cool and we call this tissue flossing and so the effect of this is that you get um, 
when you release it, like when you squeeze and release, or when you twist and release, you get this influx of fluids from the surrounding tissues, for example, the lymphatic fluid, the interstitial fluid, the uh, blood, more chi comes into that area, more oxygen, and then you're going to get um, more elasticity, you're going to get a stronger, springier fascia, and also it's more capable of storing and um, creating and storing kinetic energy, which is all you know, really, really important for effective movement and pain-free and smooth flowing movement. And that's what we're really here for. So I want to, to, as I said, show you Dragon, but first of all, we're going to do a little warm up. So I want you to step out. So your feet are shoulder width apart. I'll stand back so you can see. Stretch out the toes, grasp the ground with 10% tension. Just rock back and forth a little, finding your balance. And then gently pushing into the middle of the ball of the foot. I want you to feel that you have roots growing through the balls of the feet, down into the earth, nice and deep and wide. And gently bring your hands onto your lower dantian, three finger widths below your navel. Ladies, right hand down first, gents left hand down first and you're going to now just build as some of you have already done with me you're going to stack your bones and joints so you're going to become aware of the feet of sorry the ankles above the feet and then the knees soft in relation to the ankles become aware of the hips and then move your in your awareness around to your sacrum and just feel your sacrum gently pulling down not tucking just softly dropping to the earth finding the perineum finding the crown imagining you have a string going between these two points as you inhale you're pulling down and up at the same time you're opening up the spine softly Exhaling, relaxing the shoulders, keeping the spine long, tucking the chin back, tongue on the roof of the mouth, crown point to the sky. And you're going to just take a couple of abdominal breaths, bringing the awareness down into the lower dantian, inhaling, becoming aware of the swelling of your belly. Exhaling as it contracts. Inhaling, using the muscles gently, pushing out to the sides and the back as well as the front. Exhaling, pulling up on your perineal muscles or your pelvic floor, giving a gentle squeeze to support the contraction. One more time. Taking a filling breath, inhaling from the Dantian to the middle, into the chest. And then as you exhale, take a long, slow cleansing breath through a pinhole in the mouth, releasing any stale, stuck energy, tension, distractions. Bringing your awareness back to your skin, to the sounds around you, dropping your hands gently down as you begin to shake it out. This is always my go-to to start my warm-up. And as this is just a very short class, this is our main warm-up. But you want to really feel, guide yourself with the movement, sense into your, your body's desires, whether you want to just bounce softly, or bounce more vigorously. So you can really feel that wave of movement coming right up through the back, into the shoulders, down the arms. Enjoy it. Have a little fun with it. See where you want to go. Your body might want to move sideways. Might want to shake a leg.
This is also very good for your fascia, your bones and joints. Your joints are either getting nice and loose, your fascia is loosening up, warming up, and then of course the muscle as well. It's a nice and safe way to do it. Let your jaw go. There you go. Coming in a little faster. And just take a couple of breaths. Holding the ball of chi at the lower dantian, inhaling, expanding, exhaling as you contract. Now shift your weight onto one foot, turn the foot up 45 degrees, gently slide or lift your other leg so you're in horse stance. Now if you're not familiar with horse stance, don't come down too low. It's perfectly fine to be up here. We're just going to pulse gently in the horse stance. Just going to go down and up. Down and up. And see that my sacrum is just dropping, so I'm not tucking in or out. Should have a relatively neutral spine. Okay, and then you're going to turn. You're going to turn to one side and practice the bow stance. So you're going to turn, I'm going to mirror you, you're going to turn your left foot so it's pointing ahead and your right foot's kind of come at a 45 degree angle and just keep your hands on your hips and you're going to pulse gently into the front leg but at the same time push into the back leg. And then we come back to centre and we'll do that to the opposite side so turning one foot facing the other foot 45, turning the body, keeping your spine upright, keeping the crown to the sky, gently pulsing, pushing into the front leg, but at the same time pushing into the back foot. And then coming back to centre and stepping in. So that's prepared us for the lower body part of the dragon. So I'm going to show you the dragon on one side and then when I show you on the second side I'm going to tell you what's happening in terms of tissue flossing and squeezing the organs. And then we're going to do it together. So let me show you again, I need to see my feet, I'll step back a little bit, shifting the weight, stepping out softly and sinking, bringing the top hand down, compressing the ball, sinking into horse stance. Now as I turn, I'm engaging what we call the spiral line in the body, I'm getting, I'm going to turn so I can actually see the camera while I'm doing this. So there's several things going on. I've got a nice twist through the back leg and also down the front leg. So I'm getting that twisting, squeezing, twisting like a towel. This is coming up the spiral line and effectively the bladder meridian. It's working also into the torso. I'm squeezing on the kidneys. And I've also got this twist in my arms. And I'm even twisting my neck and my eyes right into the fingertips. And then when I release, I'm getting this flow of chi, of fluids, as I mentioned before, of energy into that body, those body parts. It's a really powerful feeling. 
So let's just do this together. Now we've effectively gone through the lower part of the body warming up already. So I'm just going to turn this heater off because I am roasting now. It was very cold earlier. There we go. So let's just have a look at what's going on with the upper body. So we open, inhaling up to shoulder height, exhaling down. We inhale as we create a ball of chi. I'm going to mirror you. So you're going to have your left hand underneath and your right on top. And then you, as you inhale, you're going to turn to your left and you're going to raise your left arm up and your, oh, sorry, your right arm up and your left is coming out as you twist the torso. Notice how this arm is straight and the hand is up above my crown and both of the hands are pointing in the same direction and the palms are flat. This arm is parallel to the ground and then I'm going to return. So as I return to centre, I'm keeping the arms straight and then I'm pushing out with the palms, extending the wrists as if I'm pushing to a wall. Then I'm bringing the opposite hand underneath. So you had the left hand underneath before, now you should have the right hand. You've got the top hand at the middle dantian and the bottom at the lower. Let's do that again. Oh, I forgot actually the first part, the compression. So first of all, you're going to compress the top hand down to meet the lower hand. Then you start to slide the hands out. Bottom one comes back, top one comes up straight as you can, looking back at the bottom palm and then coming back to centre, straight arms, pushing out to the walls and then bringing the left hand underneath again. There you go, let's do it together. Make sure you've got enough room and remember I will mirror you. Inhaling up, exhaling down. Inhaling as you hold your ball of chi and then exhale as you settle. Inhaling as you shift your weight onto your right leg, you step out into your horse, horse stance. Exhale as you compress downwards. Inhale as you turn into your bow stance. Feel that twist right through the back leg, pushing into the back foot. Feel the trunk twisting, keep your back upright, looking back at the palm, turning back to centre and then stepping in with the same foot you stepped out with. Take a moment here to focus on your lower dantian, on abdominal breathing and just check that you've landed in Zhang Duang. We're always aiming to land with our feet shoulder width apart. Now you're going to turn your left foot, shift the weight, lift your right leg, step out into your horse stance, sink your weight, sink down with the hands, start turning to the opposite side, bow stance, spine erect, twisting through the legs, through the torso, into the hands, Coming back as you untwist, stepping back in, inhaling up and as we exhale we're going to flush out fear which is connected to the kidneys. Inhaling again. This time we're going to draw down a feeling of courage and willpower into the body to counter the fear. And finally, we're going to bring in 
the colour blue or blue-black, the element of water, which is connected to this beautiful form, and the kidneys. Bringing the hands onto the lower dantian. Feel this colour shifting down the body, this beautiful blue washing through you. Down into a little pearl of chi at the lower dantian. And pulse the pearl, packing the chi as you inhale. The pearl expands as you exhale, it compresses, condenses. And slowly bring your awareness back to the space that we're in. So that was a brief exploration of the dragon form from five element Qigong, white tiger, Qigong, we, we saw how tissue flossing works through this beautiful coiling or twisting through the legs, right up the spiral line into the torso. We've also got this great compression of the kidneys as well. And then the twist or the coil continues right through the arms, the arm lines into all of the meridians in that end in the fingers. And then as we release, we get this really significant rush of energy because we're releasing all these um, the stale fluids and we're, we're getting all the fresh fluids in as well as the kinetic energy. So I hope that, that uh, you've enjoyed this little exploration of the dragon and I look forward next week to sharing with you learning to listen, listening to learn. And we're going to look at interoceptive awareness or the art of how we listen into what's going on in our bodies, not only in stillness, but also when we move and how that's an essential part of this Qigong and sports science, sports psychology especially has quite a lot to say about that. In fact, I wrote my, my thesis for my masters on this very subject. So let's bow out. Right hand is the fist, left hand covering. And I, will introduce you, I don't think I've done this yet, to our five virtues in, in White Tiger Qigong. Wisdom, benevolence, courage, sincerity, patience. Thank you everybody. See you next time. Tune in next week.